welcome to this session about quantum computing for enterprise developers. So this session is um, related to the book Quantum Computing for Developers uh, from uh, uh, Manning. You can also see my name and my um, uh, Twitter handle. And um, with that, I think, let's start the presentation. I'm a, a Java developer, a Java champion, and a, um, a Java One uh, rockstar. Um, I'm active in the Java development community. I'm the co-lead of OpenJFX, where we create the JavaFX specifications and implementations. And I'm the lead for uh, the OpenJDK mobile uh, project. And I'm also the um, co-author of the um, Definitive Guide to Modern Java Clients with JavaFX, which is a book about uh, Java on the client. And I'm the, uh, as you could see, the author of the Quantum Computing for Java Developers uh, book. I was part of the original team that ported uh, Java to Linux in 1996. Uh, and so, so I've been around quite a long time in the Java world. Okay, um, I think it's um, uh, about time for um, some code uh, now. So we will use a strange uh, um, simulator and we will write some code in uh, Java at uh, using the high-level API without using uh, uh, quantum instructions uh, yet. So um, what will we do? We will create a project. I'm uh, going to use uh, NetBeans. And um, I will create a project that creates, uh, that generates a random uh, number. Well, actually a random bit. It's going to be, it's going to generate zero or one. And then um, I'll create a few other uh, projects as well. So let me switch to NetBeans and um, I prepared the um, the code, but um, I think it's um, probably more fun if uh, um, I remove what I already uh, had. But I'll, I'll just put it in comments just in case. Ah. Just in case I forgot what to do. So um, first of all, we will create a. Um, <coughs> Uh, so we have a, a Java application with a main uh, method and we will um, call a method um, generate random uh, bit um, which um, will, well let's say, will we'll just uh, print a random bit. You know what, I'm going to uh, remove this, this. I think it should, it should work. It's a live demo, what can possibly go wrong? generate random uh, bit. Uh, it needs to be a static method. Um, so the high level API of Strange contains a class which is called classic. Uh, it's probably already imported. And that contains a number of classical algorithms. One of those is random bit and it returns an int. So that sounds uh, uh, very easy. So we just invoke that uh, method and we will get a, a random bit. And to make sure that uh, um, this is a random bit, let's uh, uh, print it out. Um, our random bit is, so don't worry, um, this is, uh, um, uh, we will later discuss what the classic.random bit is doing. But at this moment, I just want to show how you can use um, quantum benefits without having to use the uh, uh, code that's uh, without having to go deep in the code that's uh, doing this. Well, while we're actually here, I'll quickly show the classic class and you see in the, the random bits implementation, you see that it, this is dealing with qubits and so we'll come back to that later. Um, this is going to be executed on, on a quantum simulator, uh, a simple quantum execution environment. But forget about that for now, just see that we have this uh, method that um, generates uh, and prints a random bit. So if we uh, run the application, compile and run, uh, sorry, you will see that our random bit here is uh, zero. Um, how do we know that this is a random bit? Well, we don't, so we just run the uh, application again and now the random bit is again zero and we uh, run it again and now it is 
uh, again zero um, this is truly random otherwise I would have made it one the third time to show that it's more or less random and now uh, oh yeah uh, here we are now it is a uh, 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 one so this time uh, it's a uh, 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 one. So we had three times zero and one time one. So uh, this is not yet, of course, statistical proof that um, this is a, a really a random number generate, but you could see that at least a number of times it's, uh, uh, it was generating zero and one time it was generating uh, one. To, um, we can actually um, count the zeros and ones. So for example, we um, will use zero and one as uh, counters. And um, we can uh, iterate, for example, uh, thousand times over this random bit generator. And when the random bit is uh, uh, zero, we will um, increment the zero. And when the random bit is one, we will um, increment the one and in the end we will just print uh, um, the number of zeros and ones um, what's zero zero and for for zero uh, times times and one for one time. What did I do wrong? Brackets. Where did I? Ah, forgot a plus here. Okay, we save this and we um, run this again. Um, oh, I, I, I was running from uh, uh, NetBeans uh, uh, now. But I can also run uh, uh, from uh, uh, Maven just to um, to demonstrate that you can uh, use this from any IDE or from um, any command line application. So this was called random. So if we compile and then exec Java, I think this should work. Okay, yeah. There we there you go. You see our random bit. Uh, it's a it's, it's a bit small, uh, but it shows our random bit was zero for five hundred fourteen times and one for four hundred eighty six uh, times. So um, that being a bit small, I'll um, run it again with uh, NetBeans because that allows me to <coughs> to use the slightly bigger font size here. Okay, and now it was four hundred eighty two times zero and five hundred eighteen times uh, one. So um, that's um, granted not very impressive um, for a quantum algorithm that's even hidden behind the um, behind the classic interface, but it is the uh, the very first algorithm that I wanted to show, and it's uh, um, I think the outcome is very understandable, and it is also extremely relevant. The moment that you can generate zero or one in a truly random way, you can generate uh, a seed in a random way, and then you can generate uh, the whole numbers, uh, the number generator in a random way. So that's a, um, a very uh, useful start. So that is that that was the the easiest algorithm generating a random bit. Um, let's uh, make it a bit more uh, exciting now. Uh, and let's talk about uh, the search uh, uh, capabilities of uh, a quantum algorithm. There's an algorithm called um, Grover's algorithm, a well-known quantum algorithm that allows to search in an um, in a list. Uh, and if you're given sort of a function, uh, which is called an oracle, um, that um, algorithm, uh, Grover's algorithm, will determine the um, the element from the list for which the um, function would return one in um, square root of n steps, where n is the number of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, elements in the list. Typically, it would, ta it, it would take n steps uh, to be guaranteed that you have the uh, correct element, but it's, if with uh, uh, a quantum algorithm, it will be um, 
square root of n. I'm not going into detail about why that is there. That is covered uh, uh, in my book in um, uh, the, the first uh, chapters. Uh, the most important part is that um, you somehow believe that um, this is a quantum algorithm that's much faster if executed on a real quantum computer than, uh, on a, uh, than, than it can possibly be implemented on a classical computer. The important part for us now is that can we use this in Java? So let's create a, um, uh, a second uh, uh, application that does this uh, uh, search. Uh, I'm going to put this in comment and I'll use a search. Okay, so the search, I removed that. Um, oh yeah, and uh, um, I shouldn't make those methods uh, public and I should use the proper indentation and so, but um, I think you got a point. Um, so let's uh, um, make it very simple. We, we are going to search in a list of strings, and um, we will have uh, we will use colors, and um, we will use uh, um, uh, four colors: uh, red, green, uh, blue, and um, yellow, for example. So this is the list of uh, um, items that we are going to search for, and then we have a, 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 C, a function. Uh, and this is a bit um, a strange concept uh, uh, for many uh, developers who encountered this at first, but we should um, conceptually think that we do not know the function. So I will have to type the function now, but um, you, you should consider it as someone is giving us this uh, uh, function and we don't know what it is or what it is doing. Um, and we need to know what it is going to uh, return. Uh, uh, no, we do not need to know what this function is going to return for every string. We just need to know for what value of the uh, colors is this function going to return one. And um, um, well, because I'm um, uh, cheating here, because I happen to be the one who creates the function as well, but that should be a different role. Um, when the um, uh, colors color equals, uh, for example, let's say green, then we are going to return one and otherwise we are going to uh, return zero. And I forgot a semicolon. Okay. So that is, uh, um, that is, that is our function. And um, suppose that we don't know this function so that um, this is blurred or this is a uh, uh, random, then we would have to execute this function four times to see um, uh, is this function returning the green uh, uh, color or not? So we would have to do it four times. Um, with In quantum computing, we can do this in two steps with the algorithm and it's called um, search. So the classic dot search requires a list. What are the possible, uh, what, is, what are the list of elements? What is the list of elements that we want to search for? And what function do we want to use for searching? Um, one of the reasons that I'm giving this um, uh, example is that it shows how the, the, the Java function um, uh, operators are really applicable to quantum computing uh, algorithms uh, uh, already so that you can take advantage of well, both Java and the quantum computing here. Um, the result of this... Um, I. Okay, yeah, so it's it's returning uh, uh, the the type of the uh, uh, elements in the list. So the result of this classic search should be um, the, well, the element in the list that matches what the function is returning value one, one for. And to make sure that this works is, um, let's print it out, search list and got um, found. Okay, do I have everything yep okay then we can run this compiling run and this is uh, going to um, invoke the algorithm and um, it will also print how many steps uh, the algorithm was uh, using so okay steps is uh, 1.57 uh, uh, steps and with um, a probability of almost um, 1, which is 
percent, uh, the algorithm says that uh, green is uh, the one. So this is uh, um, Grove's uh, uh, search algorithm does not give 100 percent probability. Um, it's not 100 percent accurate, but it gives at the square root of the number uh, uh, of elements. It gives uh, something with a very very high uh, uh, probability. And in the um, in, in in my book, I discuss the um, uh, why uh, that comes. This is a um, second example, classic uh, uh, approach to search. The third algorithm, and that, that is something that's often very interesting to um, journalists and to well, people talking about quantum computer. The third algorithm is about integer factorization. If you know the hype about one of the hypes about quantum computing is that this will break encryption and that is because a quantum computer is supposed to be able to easily factor a large number into its uh, uh, factors for example 15 equals uh, uh, 5 uh, times 3. you really need to take that with uh, uh, a serious grain of salt um, while the algorithm is indeed capable of doing that we are um, uh, far away from quantum computers that are powerful and um, reliable enough to do this in a reliable uh, way. So I, I try not to overhype this, uh, but it is really something important. And it is also something that's very tangible to, um, to many people uh, and that might help um, convincing people why they need to look into quantum computing. Even if this is not something that's going to um, hack your uh, bank account uh, tomorrow, it is something that you should be aware of, uh, and especially the mechanism uh, behind this. So how do we do this? Well, actually, this is uh, uh, using the, uh, the high-level API of Strange, also very simple. Uh, we can just ask um, to factor a number. And uh, what this algorithm Q factor is going uh, to do is it will search for factors of 15. Um, that are not 1 or 15. So we then know that if we have one factor that we um, can uh, factor it, um, 15 into factor and and then it's uh, 15 divided by the uh, factor is then of course the uh, other um, factor. Okay, I think that should uh, be it. I noticed that sometimes um, running it from the IDE becomes slower. And this is definitely something, um, it's important to mention, this is um, something that uh, is slow on a quantum simulator because it uses uh, lots of memory. On a quantum simulator, this is much slower than on a classical computer. Uh, okay, so this was uh, fast because it it yeah it had a good random number from the beginning, but a quantum simulator simulates all the possible states of a real quantum computer, and that's a huge number of states, and it simulates this in classical hardware, so it is actually um, extremely non-performant compared to a real quantum computer. So in the uh, scale you would have a, a, a quantum simulator is slowest, then a classical computer is faster, but then the, quant the real quantum computer is, is uh, fastest, of, well, of course, only for some certain algorithms. Okay, so what we did now was um, we had three um, applications uh, generating a random bit um, using search, uh, and uh, uh, factoring an integer into uh, uh, two numbers.